Welcome back to Arise and Shine. Today we're introducing another segment in our Visionary series. I'm proud to be here with Maurice Ashley, the first black grandmaster of chess who has given back to the community by teaching young people about the game and improving their lives. Welcome, Maurice. I'm so happy. You know, I told you I'm a chess nerd. I heard. <laughs> <laughs> I played chess growing up. My dad taught me chess. It changed my life, and I know it's changed yours too. Tell me about when you were first introduced to chess. Well, I learned chess in Jamaica where I was born with my brother. He played with his friends. But I really got into chess in high school in Brooklyn Tech where I went to high school. Mm -hmm. I saw a friend who played. I played him. He crushed me. I saw a book <laughs> in, a, in the library. I took the book out. I studied it. I went back to play him again, and he crushed me again. Oh, no. And it turns out he had read that book and a lot of other books as well. So oh, we played boy. every day after school. And then we went to the parks and played against the players in the park. And it was just a thing that I just love to do all the time. Yeah, and I can't believe you were telling me that there's trash talk that happens in chess. Oh, absolutely. Real? Come on. You know, <laughs> brothers get together in Brooklyn playing chess. Wherever you get that going on, there's going to be trash talking. And you better not have any feelings at all because you're going to get your feelings hurt. Well, so you got to bring your game. The good news is you were persistent and you stuck with it and you went back and you studied and you kept playing. So did you have mentors when you were first learning the game? I did. We had a group. They call themselves the Black Bear School of Chess. It sounds real official, but it was just a bunch of brothers. We got together in each other's homes. They would study chess books. They'd read books in German and in Russian, just like try to, we didn't even speak the language, just try to decode these secret manuals to try to get these great moves. And we end up just becoming better players, playing in serious chess tournaments all around the city. And so you went from those young days to then making the cover of the New York Times. Is that correct? Well, Tell us about that. I had a team, the Raging Rooks. Uh -huh. I, after college, I was coaching kids in chess, and I had a team that won the national championships. They won the front page of the New York Times. A Harlem teenager's checkmate, a stereotype was the, the headline. And it was pretty cool bringing these kids who people didn't expect these young black kids coming out of Central Harlem to be really right. great chess players. And here they went to a national championships, national middle school championships, and won the whole thing. Amazing. And uh, how did winning for you the Grandmaster title, how did that change your life and what was that like? Well, I mean, becoming a Grandmaster, that's the, the, you know, the epic dream, right? Yeah. To have the highest title in chess. It was, uh, it was an amazing moment for me. I got a chance to travel all around the world. Uh, I played tournaments with, with players from every walk of life from all these countries, Russians and, and uh, people from, from Europe. Uh, I've, I've been to Paris. I've, you know, I actually did commentary, in fact, in the Kremlin building, which is like Amazing. insane, you know, to be able to do stuff like yeah. that. So I've, I really had a lot of opportunities. And at this obviously game you're part of our visionary series. Um, what does it mean to you that you were the first black grandmaster? Well, it was a profound thing to happen. You know, you know it's funny coming up from Jamaica, we didn't really have the same kind of minority uh, complex, if you will, being right. in the United States. You know, it was really much rougher here than there. But I understood what it meant to, to cross this line and to inspire a lot of people. Actually, there were a lot of brothers here playing chess and, and sisters as well, who, who it almost meant more to that I had done this, right. this thing that, that a lot of African Americans are not supposed to do. Yeah. And so I knew the meaning it had and it had for the young people who I coached. Okay, and so tell us about your chess apps and books, and also, um, I know you're organizing a huge event, the Millionaire Chess Open, so can you tell us really quickly about those things? Well, the apps, I have an app, Learn Chess with Maurice Ashley, uh, that's in stores, uh, that's in the app store. Mm -hmm. Also, uh, Disaster Pawns, which is a really cool Ooh. app if you just want to learn how to play chess. I like that name. I also <laughs> have a book, uh, The Most Valuable Skills of Chess, and another mm -hmm. one uh, the, the, uh, that's called Chess for Success as well. But the Millionaire Chess Open just finished. Okay. So we're organizing Organizing the second one, the Millionaire Chess Open is the largest open chess tournament in history. Amazing. A million dollar prize fund, and we were able to launch that in Las Vegas this year. Awesome. Well, it was so great talking to you. This has been fascinating and very inspiring. Thank you very much for being with us today, Maurice. To find out more about Maurice and his work, go to MauriceAshley.com. And to get his book, head over to Amazon.com. We'll be right back.